All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the finale of our webinar series, the National Tribal Energy Roundtable. Uh, Daniel Cardenas has a presentation for us on economic development, the Great Northern Corridor, and energy infrastructure, and we'll be giving closing remarks on this series. So if you are new to this series and you'd like to catch up, you can also see all of our previous webinar recordings on the USEA YouTube page in the National Tribal Energy Roundtable playlist, or you can visit usea.org slash events, scroll to the bottom of the page, and you'll see all of our previous webinar event pages, and all the recordings are posted on the event page. So before we start, a little um, about our hosting program. Uh, I'm Michelle Littlefield. I'm a program coordinator with USEA. We're a nonprofit, non-lobbying organization, and next year will be our 100th anniversary. Uh, we've done work in over 100 uh, countries with USAID, the State Department, and <coughs> Department of Energy, Fossil Energy, who funds our specific program. Uh, we call this the consensus program. Uh, this is a cooperative agreement with Department of Energy, Fossil Energy, and Carbon Management. And our mission is to educate the public, policymakers, industry, and stakeholders, pardon me, CCUS and Carbon Management Technologies. Uh, we do this by hosting public webinars. Uh, we have a series of monthly educational briefings conference workshops, technical, technical reports, and bi-monthly news clips. Uh, the news clips include CC, anything related to CCUS, carbon management, uh, rare earth elements, uh, critical minerals, blue hydrogen, environmental justice as it relates to carbon management, and tribal energy articles to our interested audience. So if you're looking to subscribe, uh, feel free to send an email to the address at the bottom of your screen. Uh, just a little housekeeping, feel free to use the Q&A button during your presentation to ask questions. Uh, like the others, this webinar will also be recorded and posted on our event page at a later date, most likely either tomorrow or Friday. Um, but we do appreciate you taking the time to join us live. Without further ado, may I introduce our speaker, speaker Daniel Cardenas. Thanks, Michelle. And before uh, we start, um, I'll just introduce myself really quick and then um, uh, my partner, uh, CJ, uh, can introduce himself uh, uh, because he'll have to leave a little bit early uh, today. Um, and so I want him to have the chance to uh, um, speak uh, and say a few words um, before um, we start. So my name is Daniel Cardenas. I'm the CEO of Shasta Advisors. And we've, uh, like Michelle said, we've been putting on, this is our sixth uh, webinar um, of the series, uh, of our starting series. Hopefully, um, we'll have more to announce at a later date. Um, but this has been a great uh, uh, opportunity with its ups and downs because uh, we've, we've never, uh, we've had great help from Michelle and the team um, uh, uh, in producing these, but we, we ourselves didn't have that experience. So um, it's been a um, it's been a really great experience. We've learned a lot, met a lot of folks. Um, but had had some stresses, uh, some queasy um, times um, uh, during that time. So, anyways, um, uh, I'll I'll turn it over to CJ to say a few words, and then um, then I'll start my presentation. Good afternoon, everybody. As everyone said, this is our um, final webinar, and we're we're looking at um, you know a whole whole list of other. Um, options and type um, topics that we're looking at, you know, that we built off of this, you know, string of revenue or uh, webinars that we had, you know, listed. And so uh, I, I appreciate everybody's attendance and I appreciate everybody's views. And, and, and like Michelle stated, you know, if you're new to this, there's still, we still have a lot of um, videos on, on YouTube and the links on USCA as well. So I, I just want to read everybody. My name is CJ Stewart. I'm from the Crow, Crow Tribe. I'm an enrolled tribal member with the Crow Tribe. Um, I've served on the council for eight years, two terms, and I currently work as the energy director for the, the Crow Nation. And so with that being said, I'm gonna hand it back over to Daniel and we'll get right into this presentation. Appreciate it. Thank you, CJ. Uh, Michelle, can you put up the first slide? Yep, it'll be up in just a second. And 
I apologize in advance for my for my slide. It's just a simple slide. It just shows the map of the area that we're talking about. I don't have a a, a, um, a large presentation. It's mostly we'll be speaking uh, and talking with you and hopefully answering your questions or and dialoguing in regards to this idea, uh, this improved this idea of of the Great Northern Corridor. And so. Um, uh, Around, I want to say, 10 years ago now, almost 2013, I believe, or a little bit prior to that, the um, Burlington Northern Railroad, along with um, these eight states, um, Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Illinois, um, partnered along with um, a handful of probably 10 or 11 uh, Northwestern uh, seaports um, and several um, uh, rail ports, uh, as you can see uh, um, on the map, um, what they're calling inland ports. They all came together and um, uh, this was, I want to say this is during the Obama administration. Um, there was a lot of talk about um, uh, these these regional corridors um, uh, being designated um, uh, by the DOD and by the several federal agencies as um, really important to our national defense. And I think um, ultimately the Great Northern Corridor um, didn't get listed. Um, you know, they spent several years trying to, um, to lobby and, and get folks to uh, Congress to do that. But um, while that was going on, um, I reached out to the organization and asked about what um, their relationship with tribes look like. And which is, which is something that, uh, as you've probably noticed during these um, webinars, is something that is, is sort of my niche, um, looking at everything with the tribal um, with a tribal lens. And this was this was no, um, uh, you know, I, I couldn't pass up this opportunity to do that. Because obviously, as you know, um, I was looking for the the, the map that, uh, that uh, the Great Northern Corridor Coalition put together um, that overlaid this map with all the reservations. There's around, I, I want to say there's around 40 uh, reservations uh, within these states, um, give or take. Uh, I could be wrong, but uh, basically, uh, uh, mostly along this corridor within um, a couple hundred miles of the, of the, uh, the this main line, um, and um, you know the the this 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 initiative in 2013 was primarily around rail. Obviously, um, you know, the, the Burlington Northern are good friends um, of myself and of, and of CJ, um, uh, but, but in, in this initiative was rail focused. Um, it was a, an initiative by the eight states and their Department of Transportation um, and the BN to attract attention to the uh, larger um, and more costly uh, uh, infrastructure and upgrading needs of the of this of this line of the BN, um, which is really important. Obviously, you know a lot of the numbers are outdated. Um, uh, you'll see in a bit. Um, the, there's some statistics attached to this uh, line in regards to how much um, uh, trade um, it moves, how much commodities, how much food. Uh, what energy it moved um, again a decade out of I was trying to, I was trying to get those um, updated numbers for this talk but uh, I wasn't able to to do that um, uh, and uh, but it's an opportunity I think um, what I want to propose is an opportunity to put to get those numbers and to look at an updated um, impact of um, what has been called the Great Northern Corridor um, actually, if you look at, um, the reason they call this the Great Northern Corridor is that one of the predecessor railroads of, um, 
the BN uh, was a railroad called the Great Northern Railroad. And this is its primary route. Basically, there, there are some other lines that are that are not on here that have been um, uh, retired. Uh, and as you can see from this, um, uh, there's the, the yellow, um, uh, there are other, there are other portions um, uh, that are not that are not on here of the BN. Uh, uh, they they lease um, they also lease uh, current at this time they had leased a portion of their uh, other lines to other railroads which have come back under the BN. Um, but the BN's um, network is a lot larger than this map. Um, uh, they're the they're the incumbent uh, railroad west of the Mississippi um, and have significant. Um, um, operations throughout the, the, the Great Plains, Southern Great Plains, Oklahoma, Texas, uh, New Mexico, Colorado, Wyoming. And so, uh, you know, this doesn't really do them justice. But um, one of the things that I would suggest is that the, the Great Northern Railroad actually um, uh, did um, extend it into, into Wyoming and South Dakota as well. And as you can see, this uh, uh, there um, uh, on the southern, south, uh, eastern portion of the rail, um, you know, the, the state of Iowa is right there. So Iowa should be included. So at minimum, Wyoming, South Dakota, and Iowa uh, probably should be uh, part of this, uh, this, uh, this region. Uh, but basically, um, if you look at the title of our talk, um, it's gone back and forth between um, uh, economic development, energy infrastructure, and the Great Northern Corridor, the Great Northern Corridor, energy infrastructure, and economic development. But basically, um, uh, I did it this way just to um, tie together the fact that energy infrastructure um, you know, we've been talking about energy, um, um, all six of these webinars and the importance uh, to Indian country, but also to this nation and vice versa. But um, the importance of energy and energy infrastructure uh, and then thus economic development to this corridor. So basically, um, 10 years ago, although they were primarily talking again about transportation, um, I want to talk about energy and the and the energy that um, this region moves, not just on rail. But if you also look on the map, you can see all the major interstates. You can see you can you can you can if you know this area, you'll 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 know where the um, uh, the major uh, in, uh, uh, electric transmission lies. Um, you, you can see where. Uh, again, this is a bad map, but you, you, you would be able to see where the major rivers um, lie. Uh, you, you, if you're familiar again with the, the our, um, our, our uh, oil and gas infrastructure, the Bakken um, uh, is right in the middle of, of this region. Uh, you, you would be able to uh, see where the major oil and gas pipelines um, move. And how important and integral this region is not only to the United States, but internationally um, as well um, uh, to our to our neighbors to the north, the Canadians, and then also the First Nations as well. And so, um, uh, like I said, I, I don't have a good map, but th this is one of the things that I'm I've been thinking about. Like, like I said, for over a decade, um, and one of the initiatives that. I've been discussing with the BN uh, in um, sort of bringing back. And the, technically, the, the 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 Great Northern Quarter Coalition still exists. It didn't die. Uh, it's just been sort of been on hiatus. And so, to me, that's an opportunity to upgrade um, uh, this initiative and and sort of upgrade it for the 21st century, uh, especially uh, when we're talking about energy independence, 
uh, since the Obama administration, uh, into the Trump administration, we started talking about energy independence. And it's still an issue in this administration is um, the control and supply of um, our energy destiny. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Another thing to think about also when we overlay the um, um, various uh, energies uh, and industries uh, and economic development over this area. Another issue that has um, that is um, getting been getting a lot of attention, um, and we discussed it uh, uh, is our critical mineral uh, uh, future. Uh, now, uh, if we include um, Wyoming, so the area of of Idaho, uh, Montana, Wyoming. Uh, has a good uh, good sources of rare earths and critical minerals, uh, but the reality is the intermount the whole intermountain area. When you include Utah, Nevada, uh, parts of California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado, to these states, this is where this is sort of the breadbasket of critical minerals that exist in the United States outside of Alaska. Um, uh, not that that they don't exist anywhere else in the U.S. But the vast majority of our critical minerals is in within this intermountain area. Um, and and, and as, as you've heard me say on uh, previous talks is critical minerals equal Indian minerals because uh, between 70 to 95% of the critical minerals that exist in the uh, Western US uh, exist either on an Indian reservation or within 35 miles of one. And so to have the conversation of our critical mineral future um, needs, there's no question needs to include tribes, not just a conversation. Um, I think we, 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 we need to move beyond conversations and start planning uh, and start uh, uh, preparing for the day when uh, our access to foreign sources of energy whether it be oil and gas, uh, whether it be uh, hydrogen, whether it be critical minerals like lithium, uh, cobalt, and others are going to start being limited to us. Um, we need to start preparing for that day, and we need to we, we should start preparing for it a decade ago. But uh, it's you know it's never too late. And I think you know the, the, hopefully this initiative will sort of um, light the fire under our our policy makers, uh, that's sort of one of my goals as well. And so, uh, Michelle, can you, can you um, push to the second slide? This was a little bit more harder to, to read, so I apologize. Um, but basically, it's the same map. But it, 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 uh, if you look at it, 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 it goes out between 50, 100, uh, 200, 300 mile increments beyond the actual line. And so this is where you bring in again, um, uh, Wyoming, South Dakota, Iowa. Um, and it just gives you a better picture of the, the potential economic impact and how it spreads the multiplier. Um, very close to the line and then as it moves out beyond the line. Um, and so the, 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 this uh, fact sheet really um, was at the heart of um, the Great Northern Corridor and their initial initiative um, on, on how they were going to get resources, the study that they were going to put together. But, but basically, it really it, it told a story about, again, from a rail perspective, um, the eight states, three Canadian provinces, the population of 35 million, um, the amount of jobs, uh, $1.7 trillion GDP of this area, um, uh, and, and its importance in terms of the amount of freight, over 222 million tons of freight on over 3,300 um, miles of, of rail. Um, and, and I wanted to illustrate this again to show that um, the importance of, of, of uh, this area, not, not, not just to our economic well-being, but also to our, our defense, to our domestic uh, security well-being as well. 
And I think that's that's one of the most important reasons why um, uh, the Congress, uh, the administration should should designate um, this corridor as a as a one of extreme import, importance to our nation because of the attributes that it, that it holds. If you look at the the um, not only the energy that's produced, uh, there are several uh, nuclear power plants uh, um, in Washington State, uh, in Iowa, Minnesota, Illinois, or legacy plants. Um, but there also have been some new ideas around um, small modular nuclear, which um, are being planned for, for Idaho on the site of the Idaho National Lab, as well as um, uh, the Natrium uh, project uh, by Terra Power at Kemmerer, Wyoming, in Southern Wyoming. So that there are two, uh, in this region, there are two being planned. I also believe there's a new scale, um, no, new scales Idaho labs, I apologize. I believe there's also one in Washington state that's being planned as well, uh, although I could be wrong. And I am not aware yet of the other states, but there's at least three um, uh, and several others that are being planned by Rocky Mountain Power, uh, at least two more um, within this, within their um, um, region uh, of Utah and, and, and um, uh, Wyoming that they plan to build beyond uh, the camera project. So we so um, as you can see with 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 nuclear, you can see that this, again, this area is, is very important um, uh, energy-wise in a lot of different areas. Um, so, you know, the, the nuclear, um, we're, we're moving into a, a golden age, they say, of, of small nuclear reactors. Um, as you can see, the uh, Pacific Northwest is home to the Bonneville Power Administration. Um, and so it, it huge hydro resource in the Northwest. Uh, as you can see, the Northern Great Plains, um, parts of Montana and, and, and uh, Wyoming, North and South Dakota, are a tremendous wind resource. Some of the best wind in the United States um, blows nearly 24 hours a day um, in many of these regions. Uh, and so the Bakken, um, the Williston Basin uh, oil clay, is right in the middle. We have the largest coal um, resources in the United States, in um, northern Wyoming uh, and southern, um, southeastern uh, Montana, with the um, the uh, Powder River Basin. Uh, it's the Saudi Arabia of, of coal, uh, and so and then uh, throughout this area, that's the reason why the the, the Great Northern railroad existed in the first place was the tremendous amount of timber resources that exist in um, Washington and Oregon, Idaho, Wyoming and Montana, and then into um, Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin. Uh, and, and so uh, that, that's still very important. Uh, and then you look at biomass, uh, which is a renewable green energy. Um, Biomass can be combined with a, a pretty much any sort of energy uh, source. The Idaho National Lab is looking at, um, as we saw in our last webinar, the Idaho National Lab is looking at um, combining biomass with um, unrecyclable um, uh, waste paper uh, and unrecyclable plastics to create a, a, a biomass based. Um, uh, fuel, which is uh, has a net zero net negative um, impact on the environment, and so, so the, again, our region uh, also has uh, several uh, national labs. Uh, Pacific Northwest National Lab is in, in Washington State. There's an outpost of the NETL National Lab in Oregon. The Idaho National Lab um, is in um, Idaho. The Ames uh, National Lab is in Iowa. There's one in Iowa, and uh, I, I could be wrong. I believe there's also one in Illinois, um, but I, I could be mistaken. Um, so we have several uh, uh, centers for R and D already 
on, on uh, national defense, but also on, on uh, renewables uh, and on um, fossil energy research and development. But then not also including um, also all the, 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 of those eight state, 10 states, um, they're, they're world-renowned universities um, that exist in all the research that they're doing. And so, again, this, this, this area is a hotbed uh, for, for uh, energy, energy production, energy research, as well as, uh, uh, again, um, uh, one of the backbones of our nation's economy um, uh, is here. Uh, as I mentioned, if you overlay the, 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 um, the region with the tribes, um, uh, you know, they, there was, there's a good, pretty good map. And I, and I, again, I apologize for not being able to provide it that basically showed, uh, the proximity of, of, uh, all the reservations and all, um, to, uh, this line. Uh, and, and, and so basically, um, had I had that to show you, I would have transitioned my talk um, uh, with that, with that, with that map, basically talking about. And I and I'm and again I, I, I'm missing uh, a whole lot of, of uh, facts and figures. I just didn't want to um, overwhelm uh, this talk and just be about a bunch of facts and figures that you can find uh, online for yourself. But really lay the the groundwork in your mind for uh, what I'm proposing an upgraded um, Great Northern Corridor, uh, which is tribally centered, tribally centric. Um, uh, and, and, uh, and I'll use the Bakken as sort of the heart um, uh, of this area. Uh, as you can see, it's sort of in the, right in the middle and then everything radiates from the heart. And I think that, um, the, although it's not the large, as you know, it's not the largest uh, um, oil play. That's the Permian. Who now the Permian, I think, is down uh, is up to five, almost five million barrels a day. I think the Permian, I mean, the uh, Bakken, probably um, does one, one point two, one point three um, million barrels a day. Correct me if I'm wrong, um, but. Uh, you know, this is, uh, uh, and a big chunk of that um, is produced on the uh, three affiliated um, uh, tribes on their Fort Bertolt Reservation uh, and provides a, a huge economic impact uh, uh, and stimulus to their economy and their bottom line and their pocketbooks of, of, of the individual tribal members of that tribe. Uh, but one of the issues that, that we've uh, seen since 2013 is that there's a reluctance uh, uh, in some of these states, like Washington and Oregon, um, to move um, oil via rail. Uh, as you know, um, during the during the time of the the DAPL and of the you know the Dakota Access Pipeline uh, controversy and uh, protests, uh, the reason that 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 pipeline was being built was because um the 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 Bakken is, is transportation constrained meaning um they have the the fuel they have the oil and they have the gas being produced but there's not enough pipelines there's not enough ways to get it out to market which means that their product is underpriced um and so rail was one way that um that uh alleviated some of that those the, the and increased the, the prices for their product their commodity was rail but you know um we've had some issues around um um what the, the those northern those two states were talking about the flammability of of um of uh, Bakken oil like I said I'm not an expert on a lot of these issues but uh, for the for for uh, I think for for harmony and for um, uh, for our future, so that we can regain our energy dominance, at least in this nation, um, with uh, being able to supply all of our energy needs and then exporting the rest. Uh, Walking oil uh, goes a long way towards doing that. 
you know, even even if even if the 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 oil is not being refined or consumed in the Northwest, the Northwest uh, is an important uh, transportation way for oil and gas to leave um, the U.S. and go uh, to our uh, far eastern um, partners in Japan and South Korea and in Taiwan. And so I think that. Um, um, some of the issues, uh, there, there's another organization called uh, the Western States Tribal Nations uh, Natural Gas Initiative, which is based in Denver and is made up of various uh, intermountain states and several tribes. And their goal is to create um, pathways for, uh, for the export of natural gas via LNG, either through Canada through the Northwest, through, um, through the Southwest and into Mexico uh, uh, you know, to get uh, intermountain um, uh, gas primarily. And initially uh, gas from the um, San Juan Basin of um, New Mexico uh, and, 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 and from the Green River Basin of uh, Wyoming. Uh, and, uh, and so I think that uh, like, again, if you combine Wyoming, um, into this uh, corridor, um, it just presents more um, energy resources that need a um, uh, a home. Basically, we we've got the 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 buyers, the foreign buyers are there. We just have to have the the, the political political will and the means to 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 move um, uh, those um, uh, resources. And so. Um, uh, Excuse me. <clears throat> the the what how I can see this this improved Great Northern Corridor and the initiative around it is not just the talking points that are here that you can see and that you can read online for yourselves, um, but uh, it really needs to be a mechanism for discussion about states' rights, um, a discussion on um, uh, interstate um, uh, trading, uh, interstate economics, the movement of goods and services uh, across state lines, um, as well as intertribal um, movement of goods and services like MHA uh, oil and gas, like throw coal, uh, like timber from, from uh, Warm Springs and Yakima uh, and, and uh, Oregon, Washington State. Uh, and then potentially like hydrogen uh, is, is gonna, I'm, I'm hearing and, and we've, we had our, um, uh, I believe our fourth uh, webinar on hydrogen um, and the, as the energy of the future, around the transportation industry, that's where I see it pr primarily being very strong. I don't think hydrogen is going to replace our power generation anytime soon, but it can be a good source of uh, fuel for um, long, long haul transportation for trucking uh, and, and for vehicles. Um, and, and again, this corridor with the interstate and with this rail is the perfect um, spot for the production of hydrogen um, and then uh, the loading of that hydrogen uh, on either as fuel for rail uh, for those trains um, or as fuel for the hundreds and thousands of, of trucks, um, tens of thousands that, that move along this corridor daily. <clears throat> and then as well as a marine fuel, uh, in uh, the, as you can see, the Great Northern Corridor connects the Pacific Ocean with the Great Lakes, and on both sides um, are, are marine fuel opportunities um, to replace um, diesel and, and, and other fuel, other bunkering and other fuels that um, um, the marine industry uses to a clean uh, alternative or hydrogen. So it's an opportunity for. For, for our region to not only produce, be able to produce clean hydrogen, but also um, be able to use it in, in, um, in our transportation um, uh, 
network. Uh, and so to, to be able to use it in our mines uh, as a replacement for diesel. And so as we talk about critical minerals and the mining of that. So really, if we think of the Great Northern Corridor, as I mentioned, this initiative as a, as a, as a, as a sort of a, 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 as a way to talk about other issues, um, including uh, revised NEPA, um, including revised um, uh, regula regulations, um, updates to our, our siting and our permitting processes so that we can site and permit and construct and operate more all the above um, energy infrastructure the, that's, that's needed like electrical transmission, um, uh, oil and gas and hydrogen pipelines, um, uh, upgraded uh, rail infrastructure, highways, um, and then um, uh, upgraded um, uh, uh, and, and, and new mines that are going to be needed for our critical mineral uh, future. I mean, we're going to need not just dozens, but probably hundreds of new mines throughout the Western U.S., including uh, within the Great Northern Corridor. Uh, and so, you know, there, there's a lot of work to be done. Um, and I think having um, an overarching um, uh, initiative to sort of handle all the discussions as a region, as basically a super region, um, um, beyond just ourselves and beyond just our tribes. Uh, but like I like I mentioned, the the idea is using the being tribal centric and then looking outwards. Uh, uh, I, I really do need to to um, uh, provide that map so that you can see it. And again, I, I apologize, but um, I, I will uh, make sure that I get that map. Um, and that it's sent to all the uh, the folks that signed up um, uh, that registered for for today's talk should be able to get it so that they can they can visualize it themselves to see um, again where the reservations lie and where this corridor lies and how they're they're intertwined. Um, uh, our as tribes, our future is intertwined with this Great Northern Corridor and with the, 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 our energy future. Um, there's no doubt. Uh, and, and, and so, but like I, as I mentioned in, in previous talks is that we don't wanna just be speed bumps. Uh, we don't wanna be just um, uh, a gate that you can open and close um, or an impediment to development. Uh, some tribes will decide that they, they don't want development. Um, but I think that most tribal communities with all the needs and all the, the, the issues that confront us around energy poverty, around, um, uh, around our, our being food deserts and the issues with our housing and um, lack of, of, of education, educational attainment and, 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 and and um, jobs and, 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 you know, I live in one of the most, especially in Wyoming, I live in the, the, the highest unemployment, unemployment community in the, in the whole state. Uh, and so uh, I live around um, a lot of folks that, that, that are underemployed and are not employed and haven't been for years. Um, and so uh, I think to me, uh, um, jobs bring dignity um, and the opportunity to take care of their families. I think, uh, like I said, that's what most of our communities are, are looking for, our legs up rather than hands out. And so I think, like I said, the opportunities around, um, around, uh, um, around this initiative, really. And so one of the things that I, again, um, it looks like it's, I've been talking for almost 40 minutes uh, and um, I think um, I'll stop there. But one of the things I wanted to to put into your minds is that I, I'm going to be approaching um, after this call and into next week, uh, talking with the Burlington Northern um, Railroad about reengaging uh, on this idea. But in, a, in an improved fashion, one that includes the tribes much more integrally than they were before. 
uh, and then one uh, one that also includes um, hopefully Wyoming and Iowa and South Dakota. Uh, and then and then um, and then go from there. I really do believe that, like I said, I'm a dog in this fight. Except I live in Wyoming, and I want to see Wyoming uh, our tribes. Uh, and then the tribes of uh, the Great Northern Corridor um, prosper um, and evolve and gain wealth and jobs and 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 um, uh, be masters of their of their destinies. And so, with that, um, like I said, I, if there's no, I, I don't see any questions. Um, but uh, if, if uh, CJ, if you're still here, um, if you have any 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 words to add. Um, Given that your tribe, uh, the Crow, are um, uh, in southern uh, Montana, um, the that the in the Burlington Northern Rail passes through um, their reservation, uh, uh, moving uh, lots of different things, but uh, coal is one of the commodities. And so, maybe you've got some some thoughts. Yeah, definitely. Um, <clears throat> thanks, Daniel. Um, that. You know that's that's some good information. I know that um, you can get online and and look up um, the the rail. You know, I know we got the Great Northern Corridor on that one rail line there, but there's also um, rail lines, you know, all over all over the area there. You know, in the Powder River Basin and and then up going up towards the the um, the oil rich areas such as um, you know the North Dakota with the Bakken and whatnot. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention as well, um, you know, I, I know Daniel, you mentioned a lot of opportunities and, and kind of some history of the rail going through these areas. One of the things I wanted to make mention now, um, now that we got everybody's attention, the, the railroad between North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho going into um, Washington serves about, um, close to a dozen Air Force bases. And so that's a big opportunity for tribes under by Indian Act. Um, there's the issues with, um, you know, you know, I know that there's wars and rumors of wars now that we're talking, you know, you know, talking about geopolitics, you know, and the need of energy in, in, in the world. You know, one of the things we got we gotta keep in in um in the back of our mind is you know, where does the tribes fit in? And how can we utilize the infrastructure that we have in place, such as um, the, rail, the rail lines, the highways, the pipelines, the proposed, you know, I mean, what, what, what makes sense? And as, as, you know, as the topic of today, I know that there's a lot of um, push for um, tribes, you know, tribes want to get into the biomass piece. That's, that's big as well. Um, I think there should be, um, further discussion with the Department of Defense in, in regard to some of these areas to ha at least have them, you know, you know, have them on your radar. And, you know, like with the Crow tribe, you know, we have an abundance of coal. And a while back, back in 2008, we had a deal ready to go. Um, the politics changed. It got shelved. Eventually, the, the deal died. But at the time, we were looking at um, the the many stars deal, and with that, you know, we had, you know, we're, the Crow tribe is um, strategically, you know, right in in dead center of a dozen Air Force bases, and so at the time, we were looking at servicing those Air Force bases because the Crow tribe does have a relationship with the United States government under an 1825 friendship treaty that recognizes and supports and protects each other's. Um, good services and, and 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 products and you know through that relationship you know and and to this day we still are um you know i believe the crow tribe is the only one that has a friendship treaty with the united states government or any particular um relationship such as as what i have just described so you know that puts us in a good place but then again there's a need and then there's uh, and there's folks out there that don't want fossil fuels, um, regardless of of how you feel about you know whether you need it or not. 
Um, I think we need to understand that these railways and, and to get this, these resources you know, to the, to the places they need to go and to actually um, be a friend of Indian country. And Burlington Northern is, is, is um, we're, we have a really good relationship with Burlington Northern. Unlike some, you know, some people, you know, some, some entities have a, you know, they're, they're, um, they're, they're not in a good place and strategically, geographically. And so it, 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 it's kind of hard for trains to come in those areas, especially like when the harvest period um, occurs. You know, we have a, you know, that's a big time for the, for the railroad. And so that, that's, you know, that's a time when we need to understand that, you know, there's a, there's a big schedule on the, on the railroad and that, you know, coal, sometimes we'll have to wait for trains. Um, but nevertheless, Burlington Northern comes through and they, they pick up our coal and they take it where it needs to go. And so uh, we're, we're pursuing more. We're, we're pursuing a better relationship with um, the NSF, and so we're trying to um, make sure that um, we get, you know, get on the rail line and be able to have that access and ability, just like everybody else. And so, you know, we're we're working towards those developments, and you know, and, and like I said, we do have a good relationship with Burlington Northern. Um, Kate Farmer has been just super um, working with her and her um, team at the campus in Fort Worth. And so, I mean, I would encourage a lot of the tribes to, to work with Burlington Northern. They have, they, they're, right now they're listed as the, as the number one and, and largest um, um, rail, rail line and rail company in the nation next to uh, Union Pacific. So, you know, they do service a, a huge amount of the, the West and, and a lot of the metropolitan areas of the West. And so I think that, you know, you know, it's just strategic, you know, on where it's at and how we want to move forward. And, you know, I believe that this Great Northern Corridor, you know, we need to start thinking about how we're going to protect it and how we're going to utilize it. And we, we got to understand it's, it's up there by the Canadian border. And we have a lot of folks, you know, that are, that are not friendly and, we need to we need to keep that in mind as well that there is you know we do have to think about that you know protecting our products and looking at you know protecting the ability of um, getting our um, resources you know to the market and so I mean this this is a great opportunity to reach out and um, you know touch base with some of these entities I mean you know if you know, get into the Buy Indian Act with the Department of Defense. I mean, that, that'd be a great opportunity for some tribes, you know, especially with food sovereignty, um, biomass, um, fossil fuels, you know, just other products. I mean, right down to um, with food sovereignty, you know, to, to um, providing, um, you know, beef, you know, shipping beef. And being that we're in cattle country, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a plus. You know, the biggest um, economies in the state of Montana for a while there, and it was energy, um, agriculture, and tourism. So I mean, there's there's an opportunity there as well. You know, as far as tourism is concerned, I know BNSF. I mean, if anybody's been to their um, to their campus in Fort Worth, you know, they have a lot of um, uh, it's like a museum, and so you know they they really um, they really take pride in that. You know, the these old paintings back then they didn't have Polaroids or any uh, you know, they didn't have, you know, good, um, you know, technology that we had. So a lot of folks would, would, would paint and they would paint these scenes in these areas that people have never seen, especially on a train, you know. And so, you know, it, it's, it's definitely something that, you know, we, we all need to really think about and, and, and be able to, you know, figure out how we're going to be able to utilize and create partnerships between BNSF as well as um, the tribes and and their respective um, partners as well. So with that, Daniel, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, CJ. Um, I just need a little break um, uh, from after um, speaking for so long. Um, we, we just got a comment from Ben, um, basically uh, in regards to um, unreal, um, how do we realize basically um, uh, or what industries do we want to see within our in our area um, to realize our future? And I, and, and I alluded to a little bit um, 
on, uh, on the map is that as we move forward, not only is our area, this I say our, but this Great Northern Corridor, our area, is going to be key for rare earths and critical minerals and the mining of those and the production of those um, minerals. But we also have to keep in mind that, that we need supply chains as well. Um, and so, you know, it doesn't mean that um, the, the same area can't, can, can also, cannot also be developed the supply chains because we have the rail, we have the tra uh, we have the transportation routes to get it to um, anywhere in the world or anywhere in the United States within a day or two. And so I think that um, that's really going to be the job driver and the job, um, the draw, the job connector and creator is going to be the supply chains that are developed around rare earths and critical minerals, around electric vehicles, um, batteries, around um, renewable um, energy, solar panels, uh, wind turbines, and then all the other things that we're going to need for all the energies of the future that we haven't even discovered yet or that that don't exist. And so I think that. Um, uh, the transportation corridors within uh, the northern U.S., um, west of the Mississippi, uh, I think, are excellent. Uh, we have a lot of smart people, uh, a lot of um, folks that have moved into the area away from the, the coasts, away from the big cities that um, have PhDs and have higher um, education, have the, 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 the skill sets to be able to take um, those new industries into the, well into the 21st century. And I think that, that, that that's gonna be key moving forward is that we, we have the workforce, we have the, the youth. Um, and, and as you mentioned, we, it's a border. So there are issues with, um, with uh, domestic um, protection. Uh, we need to make sure that, that um, folks um, that are that are against us, uh, are, you know, we're, that we're protected from them. But it also means that the the infrastructure is even much more critical um, than it has been in the past. Um, and as we talk about, I'm a big, I'm, a, I'm the biggest proponent of of, of microgrids, of uh, these small um, at your home level, community level, uh, whether it's solar or wind or geothermal or battery powered um, microgrids can provide a good um, uh, alternative, but also a good backup for when uh, the larger system may not be available. Um, but the, one, of the, one, of the, one of the important things about microgrids is that they're only as strong as the, the, the weakest link. Um, th those are gonna be areas where uh, uh, cyber terrorism can take place with the, the microgrids that are that are poorly constructed uh, or engineered. And so I know that a lot of work at the Idaho National Labs right now is being done on, on, on these kind of threats and how to um, how to create the microgrids of the future that that also give us um, security against uh, various uh, against various threats. And so um, uh, one of the things um, I did forget, uh, and so Michelle, if you could bring up uh, the last slide. Um, in my haste, I had forgotten that there was one more slide that I wanted to um, uh, bring to your attention again. Um, the, the letters are small, but um, uh, basically these were the goals and the objectives of uh, the initial uh, Great Northern Corridor Coalition. It lists again the, those eight um, states and the various ports, um, sea and um, uh, rail ports that participated. But basically, a lot of these um, goals and objectives will still uh, apply today, especially uh, reducing the transportation carbon footprint. Um, that's one of the things I mentioned in regards to uh, using hydrogen. Um, as a um, uh, long distance fuel for rail, um, uh, for trains and for, for um, long haul trucking, um, uh, anything that diesel um, could be used for, whether it's mining trucks um, uh, and, and um, agricultural vehicles. Um, and so 
uh, like CJ mentioned, um, not just uh, uh, you know every state in um, the Great Northern Corridor is an ag state, um, as well as our neighbors to the north. Uh, each of the provinces to our north are agricultural provinces as well. And so the, the, at certain times of the year, the grain, the, the, the rice, the, the wheat, the corn, um, or is nothing, is that's all you see on the trains. They're moving to market uh, internally within our country, within Canada or, or, or to foreign nations. Um, and so making sure that, 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 um, that, we, that we are cognizant of our uh, transportation carbon footprint um, uh, I think is really important. Um, you know, the, the sustaining and enhancing our economic vitality, global competitiveness, competitiveness of the region, I think it's even much more important now that we're talking about resourcing, right? Um, uh, there's all kinds of new terms now, and I, I don't know half of them, but you know, we're, we're re-onboarding, right, um, jobs that we sent to India and China in the past. We're starting to send those back home. Um, and so, uh, you know, the, the, this idea of, um, uh, I think during the COVID, we kind of, we, maybe we did strengthen ourselves or, or we hurt ourselves. I don't know what the, the ultimate um, uh, um, assessment will be in regards to working from home, telecommuting. But telecommuting does impact and does benefit our neck of the woods in the Great Northern Corridor. Uh, folks that lived in Seattle and Portland by moving into Idaho and Montana and Wyoming, <coughs> excuse me, um, they brought their high, high salaries, but also their ability to, to, to continue to add um, uh, economically, um, but by living in places where um, where there's less crime and cheaper um, land values, et cetera. And obviously internally that does create um, pockets of, of inflation and those are things that we're dealing with, but having um, economic vitality and being globally competitive, I think are gonna be key. And, and we've shown that our region can, 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 can um, uh, compete with anybody in the world. Uh, and that we create products and, and commodities that 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 the world needs. Um, uh, you know, the the land use development I think is important. Um, sustainable and secure energy um, is all is also key. But doing everything in a sustainable way. The West is our home. Um, the 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 vast majority, of, a big chunk of the tribes are in the West, and we don't want to create waste dumps and 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 uh, landscapes that are unrecognizable. These are our backyards. We want to keep them clean um, and fresh. Um, but we can we can do development in, in, in more sustainable and, and community beneficial ways than we've done in the past. Um, we, we know that we can do this. Um, uh, uh, 21st century uh, transportation system that utilizes diverse revenue and financing mechanisms. With the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act, the IRA, the second IRA, we always joke in Indian country, there was the Indian um, uh, Reorganization Act was for our IRA, but um, it wasn't necessarily a good thing. Um, but now the IRA part two, hopefully is a better thing for Indian country. Um, but but you know, in, in that act, it, it, there's a, a lot more resources, a lot more mechanisms to finance, not just transportation, um, uh, rail and, and road, but also creating factories and, 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 and uh, upgrading our, our, our power uh, generation facilities with carbon capture. And that's one of the things that I, that I failed to mention is that Montana and Wyoming and North Dakota um, uh, are the premier uh, areas for geologic sequestration in the United States. Um, the most of the study has been done here for the longest, and we have the, the largest, um, we're able to capture the largest volume um, underneath our feet. And so you combine that with uh, CCUS, carbon capture, utilization, and storage for, for, for coal power generation, for, for, for natural gas generation. Combine that with our world-class renewables like hydrogen, I mean, uh, hydropower, um, nuclear, 
wind, uh, and solar. I mean, um, we create, there's the all the above can happen here, which just makes our grid much more secure and much more stable than anywhere else in the United States. Um, uh, Another area that's not mentioned here, but that 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 CJ mentioned around agriculture is the 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 amount of water um, that we have in, in the northern uh, corridor, the 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 adjudicated water that the tribes have, and that the that the the the, uh, the Wyoming, um, uh, Colorado, Utah. Um, have on the, uh, along the northern Colorado River. I mean the um, yeah the Colorado River. Um, but the whole point is that 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 water is much more important now than it has been over the last uh, decade or two with uh, with a lot of waste. And so if we have an abundance of water, this region can then um, uh, be much more um, play a bigger role in. Um, figuring out our, our, our water future and how that relates to our energy future because they're related. Um, but um, uh, again, technology and um, improved freight mobility, I think is gonna be key as well. Having the national labs there as our partners. Um, um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, uh, so really, um, uh, one of the objectives that they that they that they list is establish the coalition as the go to resource, and that's really what I was talking about towards the end of my um, earlier, is that we want the the I like the Great Northern Quarter Coalition or whatever it's called afterwards, whatever it um, evolves into, to be the go to resource, to be the mechanism. The, the 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 to be the table basically that this dialogue happens uh, throughout the northern uh, western United States is that whether it's climate change whether it's economic and energy security whether it's uh, defensive security infrastructure related um, transportation um, you know how do we deal with with issues around our population I mean uh, on our on our peripheries you know, um, Oregon and Washington and, and Illinois, Seattle, Portland, and Chicago, um, and, and Minneapolis, for that matter. Um, these have been areas where there's been a lot of unrest, of social unrest. Um, and, um, uh, you know, how, how do we, they're our neighbors. These are our neighbors. This is part of this. We're all Americans. So their problems are our problems. And so how do we come together? Um, and, and try to resolve some of these issues that um, that are that are coming up around whether it's economic justice, whether it's an envir environmental justice, and so um, uh, and safety and security uh, and, and, and and all the above. And so um, so you know, with that, like I said, um, uh, you know the the you know I. I this is a long-term uh, uh, issue. I wanted to close with with this subject because I think it's it, it, it's all encompassing. Uh, there's really no there's no end to the dialogue. There, there, it wasn't meant to have you know questions and, and answering the questions today. To me, it's just a start of um, of our um, of our ongoing dialogue. The, what we've tried to build here with with the series of webinars. Um, and so, although this is the end for this particular series, we're hoping, um, and we are, we are um, uh, proposing um, um, that this continues, um, that we would have a, 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 a second series, but that would go into more detail on some of the issues that have been um, uh, brought up here questions from the audience and subjects that we've spoken about. And so um, uh, I, I, I want to focus on, on, on four areas as we move forward. Um, hydrogen, uh, critical minerals, carbon capture, utilization, and storage, and then um, th this great northern corridor. Um, and, and so those are uh, areas which, um, as well as nuclear, 
Um, that's something that I did talk about um, a little bit before, but that with the small uh, modular reactors, there is um, somewhat of a nuclear renaissance. Uh, and, and, and we as communities um, in, the, in the northern part of the country and in the west, um, where uh, we have a lot of the resources, uh, need to start having conversations around um, these uh, nuclear power plants, which they say will replace coal uh, powered plants. But I don't look at it that way. I look at it as these can augment coal power plants. Um, coal power plants with CCUS create clean energy. Um, and so uh, if we want to have a small modular nuclear to make things cheaper, more the more the merrier is, is the way I look at it. And so, um, but we, we need to start also having a dialogue around nuclear and, and nuclear waste. The, 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 the fourth and fifth generation of nuclear power is a little bit different than the second and third generation um, and the waste that they created. And so there's a, there's a different kind of waste, a different kind of uh, need. Um, but that's one of the things that I don't hear mentioned when we're talking about nuclear development new nuclear development is everybody wants to have these new nuclear power plants but what, what happens to the waste and i think um having a, a smart uh educated and transparent discussion moving forward i think this uh idea of having this great northern corridor coalition as the go-to as the as the mechanism to have this discussion i think is, is really smart um uh and and, and something that i'm going to be pushing for and so um so with that, I wanted to close um, um, our, our series of talks. This one has been the shortest so far, but um, again, uh, it shouldn't be long before you hear something, uh, 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 hopefully about a new series. Um, uh, again, that's above my pay grade, but um, that's something that I'll be proposing. So hopefully that 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 will be um, uh, acceptable, and then that we can move forward on that um, in the coming months. But in the meantime, um, one of the things uh, um, that that uh, we did kind of allude to over over um, in our initial webinars, but CJ and I uh, obviously have been really busy putting these together along with our team. Uh, Michelle and Alex and Mike and all and all the, the great support that we get from the USDA. Um, you know, um, as you know, if you live out in the West, we've been dealing with um, snow since since Thanksgiving, basically. So four, five, six months of snow, not nonstop, but pretty much um, every every week a snowstorm. Um, and so we didn't get to our um, our podcast that we that we initially uh, had, had um, said that we would start in 2023, and so that's one of the things that we will probably pick up um, towards the second half of the year is we will start um, uh, our um, tribal energy podcast, which are just complementary to the kind of subjects that we we'll, that we've been talking about here um, uh, with these webinar series, and so. Um, the, keep an eye out for that um we also uh i started a blog around critical minerals uh which you've probably seen um and, and keep an eye out um for some new um uh, blog posts i've been sick lately and uh, traveling a lot and so sort of um was a little bit on a hiatus but those were greatly received as well and so um and, and it's something like I said that that uh, critical minerals are going to be very um, key component to our podcasts, our, our, our blog posts, and and then uh, hopefully any uh, webinars that we, we we do in the future will be around that around that subject. And so, um, anyways, uh, it, it's been great. Uh, I appreciate uh, your your attention, uh, audience, um, uh, and. Um, uh, without any questions, uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it there, uh, and hopefully we'll see each other soon. Uh, and um, like I said, I just want to um, thank you for, for not only your support today, but your support throughout the series. 
um, telling your friends and colleagues, watching the reruns, um, uh, not reruns anymore, but you know, watching the the uh, the videos on YouTube at your um, uh, uh, in the comfort of your own home at your time, and that's also appreciated as well. And so, again, if you have all, all you have, uh, my contact information is is around. Feel free to ask questions after the fact or supply, uh, any comments um, to myself or to the team here. Uh, uh, Michelle's email is always on 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 the uh, there at the beginning. Uh, uh, and so, with that, I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel.